Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, hello. My name is Skylar. I am a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. So I thought it would be a fun idea to start another little mini series here on my channel where I use my expertise and first-hand experiences to review different pet products. That way you're not wasting your money on things and you also know different ways that these products can be used to help benefit you as a pet owner. So naturally, I thought it would be a good idea to start with some things that I use literally every single day. So today we are going to be talking about the Outward Hound Slow Fun Feeders. If my dogs come in and out of shot or if you hear some weird noises, it's because I do have their food bowls in my hand and they know what that typically means. So bear with us. So as you can see, I have two different styles. The Outward Hound Fun Feeders do come in a wide variety of colors, shapes, and sizes, um, but the colors and shapes do stick the same, so if you want a spiral, I think you can only get an orange spiral in this large size. Each one of these big guys can hold about four cups of kibble, which is more than enough for most people who are feeding kibble, even for a large dog, and it also is really easy to shove canned food or raw food into these little shapes and grooves here. While these bowls are obviously super fun, there's also a lot of benefits to using a slow feed bowl and there's a lot of benefits to these ones in particular as well. So slow feed bowls obviously help your dog to not eat so fast. Your dog should not be eating their whole meal in like five seconds. They absolutely should not. You want to extend their meals to be at least a minute long. If you're able to make it like two, three, five minutes, that's so much better. The slower your pet eats, the less likely they are to get bloat, which you don't want your pet to get bloat. It's a trip to the vet, it's scary. Just let them eat slow. Besides just preventing bloat, you can actually use this as a weight loss tool. Before we get any kind of crazy, scammy weight loss claims, let me explain. Your dog sees their food and how many bites it takes to eat, not necessarily how many pieces there are to eat. So if you give your dog a whole handful of food and then one piece of food, if it only takes them one bite to eat both, you just gave them one bite of food. That's all they care about. So by making it take longer to eat, in their mind, they're eating so much more food. Oh my God. If me, a feast? Oh my God. But in reality, it's the same amount of food. It just takes them a lot longer to eat it. This is really helpful if your dog is on a diet, is eating a little bit less than they would probably appreciate, and maybe you feel bad about it, which you shouldn't. But this can definitely help create the illusion of you still are eating a ton of food, trust me. These bowls are also really great enrichment opportunities. So I'm sure you've heard me mention enrichment before, and I, trust me, am wanting to do so many videos just dedicated to enrichment because it's one of my number one tools as a dog trainer. So with these bowls, yes, obviously the fun shape is gonna slow down your pet, but it also creates a really good enrichment opportunity. So enrichment is an activity that will stimulate their brain and that mental stimulation is just as important as physical exercise. By your pet having to really think about all of the grooves and how to get that one little piece of something something out of the corner, they're using all of that mental energy that they could be using to destroy your furniture or to dig in the backyard or to want to bolt out of the house. All of those problem behaviors usually stem from not enough mental stimulation. So that's where these can become such a great tool as well. I've also seen a ton of other people freeze the food into these bowls, and I think that's an excellent idea, especially if you want it to last a long time. Again, when you freeze the food, it makes it more difficult. More difficulty means more brain power to figure out the puzzle, and you're gonna end up with a dog that's exhausted at the end of the meal because they just used all of this brain power to get all their food out. Win-win situation. If these slow feed bowls alone aren't enough to slow down your pet, you can always add to and that'll help slow them down. I always recommend adding to your pet's diet anyway because as I'm sure you've seen in a ton of my other videos, kibble was not made for the optimal health of the pet. It was made for the convenience of the consumer. 
So by adding things to your kibble, you're making their diet much more well-rounded, much more healthy, much more fun for everybody involved. It's just, you should definitely be adding to your kibble as much as you possibly can. You can add bone broth or goat's milk or even just warm water and kind of float all of the rest of the food so that they have to almost bob for apples to get it out, which is yet another way to add moisture to the food, which is super, super, super important, especially if you're feeding a primarily kibble diet. Now these bowls do have a couple of cons that I do want to address really fast. My very first con is that these bowls are plastic. Plastic is a little bit more willing to absorb things that are put into it. So definitely washing these bowls often is gonna keep your pet healthy, keep them from stinking, and keep them lasting a little bit longer. Luckily for us, these ones are dishwasher safe as long as you have them in the top rack, which does make it pretty easy to keep them clean. That being said, these bowls typically run around in the $25 mark. So it's pretty easy to replace them when they start getting real gross. Another con, and this goes with almost anything that you give your dog, is there is the potential of them to try to eat it. This bowl of mine, for example, um, it was probably the second or third meal that we had fed using this bowl, and I forgot to pick it up right away. I remembered the orange one, forgot this one. So the entire rubber on the back is missing, and we have chew marks around the sides here. That's not good. You, you don't want that for your new stuff. So always be sure to pick these guys up, put them out of sight so that your pets aren't able to chew them up with them just laying there. Not all pets do this. I'm able to forget these on the kitchen floor for a long time and not have any issues now. But we did go through a phase where Misty the Husky uh, would pick up her bowls, carry them into the living room and drop them at my feet if they were not full. So, if your pet eats things, pick these up after their meal, for sure. In general, I'm a huge fan of these bowls. I really do love them. I obviously use them for every single meal that I give my dogs. I also do think it's fun to switch it up. So some days Luna will get the purple one, Misty will get the orange one, and vice versa. That way they're not doing the same pattern every single meal. There are quite a few other slow feed bowls, quite a few other methods of feeding that makes it even more of an enriching experience. And I'll definitely touch on those later. But these slow feed bowls are definitely a step up from just a standard bowl. And whether your dog eats super fast or not, I really do think that these are great for all dogs because you do have that added enrichment experience involved, which is always amazing and excellent. So that is my review of the Howard Hound Fun Feeders Slow Feed Bowls. I'm a huge fan of these. I recommend them to people all the time, especially if you also have a large dog that eats all the things super fast, super handy dandy, and it does have a lot of really good perks to it. So I'm going to go ahead and leave some links down below of places where you can find these fun feeder bowls. However, before you check those out, I'm a huge supporter of independent pet stores and I highly recommend that you check those out before ordering them online if you're able to, just because we wanna support our small businesses and everything that I talk about is so foundationally important to independent pet stores. So I'm a huge supporter of them. Please check them out. If you can't, link in the description. Check those out. Without further ado, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel down below. If you haven't turned on the notifications, please do that as well. I noticed that some of you did, and it reminded me that I need to start saying it because it makes me very happy when I have a bunch of people right after I post a video. So, thank you, I appreciate you. If you're wanting more pet information throughout the week, or if you're just interested to see what my dogs look like and what my life looks like, I do have two different Instagram accounts. I have tattooed.dogtrainer, which is my personal account. I also have Top Dog Behavior, which is my business account. Definitely give those two a follow. And if you wanna tag us in your pet pictures or use the hashtag MyTopDog, then we can repost your pictures and you might see them at the end screen at the end of my videos. I started doing that a couple weeks ago and I'm very excited. So far it's just a bunch of pictures of my dogs, which I'm totally fine with, but I would like to see your dogs too. Or cats, or fish, or snakes, or lizards, or whatever you gets. 
Last but not least, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you're excited about this series. If there's any products that you would like my opinion of, go ahead and leave those in the comments as well. These videos are nice for me because some of my videos, especially the pet food ones, are very in-depth, kind of difficult to film, and I really do try to get two videos out a week for you guys. So this makes it a little bit easier for me, and I feel that I can still give some really good recommendations for you. So leave those down in the comments. I've talked a lot in this past little outro here, so I'm gonna actually just stop. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.